we're trying to, to fight back, it's coming at us. And the, the program, the GPGI, and uh, the NRCS is helping us to, uh, to meet that enemy as it's coming at us. We can move into an area, execute a, a brush management contract on it, clear it of trees, and we feel really good about it. And then two, three years later, we see all these seeds coming back. And so the, the seedlings absolutely are a problem because they're making seed as well. You have to expand out and look at the landscape because especially with woody encroachment is you can do everything perfectly inside your fence. If your neighbor isn't doing anything, you will lose. There's just, that is what it is. And so you have to get your neighbors on board. So when you look at that satellite imagery data, when you look at those maps and you can see year by year, you can see this encroachment. Uh, I think that really uh, wakes folks up. It, it, it did me, I know that. That's really the eye opener. Seeing that science data and seeing how quickly the biome is shifting, seeing how quickly woody encroachment's actually moving. Woody encroachment has become much more of a threat. Uh, looking through pictures, my grandparents' pictures, pictures of their house, you can see the hill behind their house, not a tree on it. Now it's a small forest. So trees have definitely become more of a problem. Great Plains Grassland Initiative, GPGI, is named appropriately Great Plains. It's a the name of a of a biome, of a large grassland biome, right? And it, it's all it's all interconnected. We're we're looking at landscape level um, ecological management here against woody encroachment. And so, you know, woody encroachment, seed dispersal, uh, it doesn't care where the state line is. It doesn't care uh, where the fence line is between one property owner to the next. It, those those things are abstract. Simply ecologically, those, those things don't matter. They're just lines on a map. And so it's important that, that we uh, have consistency and, and work together, not only from one landowner to the next, but from one uh, political boundary to the next, whether that's the neighboring state, neighboring county. What the Great Plains Grassland Initiative has really allowed us to do is it's really uh, allowed us to have actual wins on the grassland. Ourselves and, and many of the other producers, we cut more and more trees every year and we feel like we have nothing to show for it. When, when Direct Tidwell, uh, came along and showed us a study and the Great Plains Grasslands Initiative started, it gave us something to really get a hold of where we could actually win and make progress on our grasslands. And that's really important to us. And it keeps that fire going so that, you know, we can keep going, make progress. I don't go out in the pastures without my lop and shears and a collapsible handsaw. I've set a personal goal for the last eight years of a thousand trees that I personally get. And that does not include my grinder chipper or what uh, the rest of the ranch crew has. Every vehicle at the ranch has this equipment in it. And it's so easy, it's like cutting thistle. You see it, you take care of it. And then you don't have to worry about it again. It's the idea of, of having cores and large areas of intact grassland. Um, you, so you identify the core, you develop the core, you protect the core, and then at the same time you, you attempt to expand the core. Because as, as you do that, you make uh, acres that are interior to the core much less vulnerable to uh, woody encroachment or, or reinfestation with, with woody, woody encroachment. Defending the core to me is all about intact grassland. So not only about trees, but having healthy rangeland in our pastures, you know, against any invasive species, against bare ground, healing feed grounds, really just looking at the health of our pastures and saying, what can be better and how can we make this better? So we did come up with national policy on addressing woody encroachment uh, because it's important. We're the last tack grassland left. If we lose this, uh, that impacts our grazing that impacts our packing, that, that impacts our consumer down the road. So I think we can bring everyone in on this, even our public now can recognize not just the beauty, but the importance of keeping it as a grassland. I just always have wanted to make what I have, what I was able and blessed to be able to either purchase or, or rent, you know, better than the way I found it. I just want to pass it on to my family and, you know, work to, make it better for them, I guess.
My hope is that we, we start seeing these defended cores grow in size, that we can actually share the stories of the mush rushes and those individuals that stepped up and said, you know, grasslands are gonna win. And if grasslands win, then the mush rushes win, wildlife wins, pollinator wins, so, you know, the, the sequestration, you know, carbon wins. And so there's just a lot of winds on the landscape if we can keep this prairie landscape what it is.